tragedy began over an encounter uh, with a driver who's dropping off passengers in the 6300 block of South Calumet Avenue about 3 p.m. on Friday afternoon. Um, during this, uh, Darren and uh, Darwin Soros opened fire on this intended target. And unfortunately, they strike Nike Aldrich, who was walking on the sidewalk, pushing a stroller. She's fatally struck by the bullets. Both of these offenders have been charged with first-degree murder at this time. There was no weapons recovered from the offenders. We, don't, we didn't recover the guns from the felons, so we don't know where they, where they got their guns. But obviously, you guys know, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but how many guns we recover from the, sh from the street every single day. It doesn't seem to be very difficult for these felons to get their hands on any weapons. Well, I, that works. Uh, IDOC in the county worked that, but uh, basically he's on an ankle bracelet and he has freedom of movement, I think, uh, between about 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. And the freedom of movement is normally to do what he has to do, possibly look for a job. Obviously, this individual chose to use his time by uh, killing someone. Did the driver? The driver was the intended target. He is not an Uber driver. He's not an employee of Uber. Is he an employee? Uh, we, I don't have that information at this time. We don't, we don't know at this time. Pardon me? It appears from our initial, um, initial uh, story that, that we got that this individual was driving females from a suburb to Chicago in some sort of fair exchange program. However, uh, once we started digging into the details of the incident, once we knew he was the intended target of the incident, obviously our focus was on, was on the murder. So I don't have the exact details of whether a fear was exchanged or not exchanged. The fact of the matter is he was the intended target of the incident, and he was 100% cooperative with us from the start to the finish of this, and we couldn't have completed this investigation without his help. He, well, it appears that he was targeted because he's not from the area. He's dropping these females off in the area. Um, this individual uh, intended target exchanges looks with one of the offenders on the street. Um, the, one of these offenders knows he's not from the area. These offenders believe that uh, he may be armed with a weapon, at which point when this uh, individual, he goes back and forth between where he dropped the girls off, the residents in his car. When he comes out to his vehicle, now there's two offenders out there armed with handguns who begin chasing him down and uh, attempting to kill him. And and they miss him and, and they and they kill the female. What led you to We have sorry. We have, we have video of the incident, and we were very fortunate that we uh, worked with the school and security officers in the area, and one of the security officers was able to assist us in uh, uh, possibly identifying the offender, and we uh, were able to um, arrest one of the offenders, and then once we were continuing with our investigation and interviewing this individual, subsequently we were able to identify and arrest the, the second offender, who's his brother. Well, I'll start with the last part first. I was in Washington and uh, met with uh, major city chiefs from all over the country. What, I, what I'm hearing is that this is a situation that pretty much everybody is experiencing right now. So Chicago, it's not unique to Chicago. Uh, as far as what Mr. Trump said, I don't have a whole lot of comment on that. If you have a magic bullet to stop the violence anywhere, not just in Chicago, but in America, then please share it with us. We'd be glad to, to, to take that information and stop this violence. This, this, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm so sick of, of, of every weekend talking about the murders that happen in the streets. And, and the, the, the frustrating part is, to me, I've told you all countless times, we have 1,400 individuals that drive this gun violence in this city. This isn't a mystery. We've got very good at predicting who will be the perpetrators or victims of gun violence. You know, these guys choose that lifestyle, but they continue it because we continuously show them there's no consequence. They're going to keep doing it until we show them we're serious. I don't need to, to preach about the incentive for other leaders 
to do something about this problem? The answer is out there. We just have to get it done. And we should not, listen, I feel bad for the Wade family, I feel bad for the Aldridge family, but I feel bad for all of the families in Chicago that have lost somebody unnecessarily because of this silly gun violence that we experience. These gang members on that SSL list, they make a conscious decision, that's the direction I want my life to go in. They do, they make that conscious decision. The rest of us, these streets belong to the rest of Chicago, not to them. But until we get serious about holding them accountable and put them in jail and keep them there, then we're going to continue to spin around like this. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, we, we have to take a look. We'll get back to you about that. I don't know how many times I can say it and how clear I can be. Chicago has roughly 2.6, 2.7 million people that live in this city. We have identified 1,400 individuals that drive our gun violence. Year to date, 85% of our fatal and non-fatal shooting victims are on this list. You don't need me to tell you, just look at the numbers. You see the numbers, 85%. That means these individuals chose that lifestyle. So if they're choosing that lifestyle, then we have to choose to hold them accountable for it. Until we do that, we're going to continue this. Until we hold repeat gun offenders accountable for using a gun to commit crimes three, four, five, six times, we're going to continue to have these conversations. Well, I haven't dug into what the punishment should be, but whatever punishment they get, then they should have to abide by that and serve their time. That's, that's the bottom line. If you commit gun violence in this city, you commit uh, crimes with guns, you should be held accountable. It, I mean, it, I don't know how else to say it. It, it. It's frustrating. You know, when a police officer, let me tell you all this. These police officers work hard and, and nationally, law enforcement is being scrutinized like no other time before. Yet these officers still go out there every day and arrest these individuals. Chicago is closing in on 6,000 guns recovered this year. That's ridiculous. Chicago has recovered an illegal handgun every hour of the year of 2016. Every hour. We recover more guns than LA and New York combined. That's not because we're better than them. It's because of the proliferation of guns out on the streets of Chicago and the individuals willing to get them and to use them. So the answer is clear to me. It's clear, crystal clear. The gun offenders that choose to do this time and time again, we have to hold them accountable. We need to put them in jail and keep them there. Well, I tell you this, uh, we partnered with uh, Senator Kwame Raul and Zaleski on the gun bill that they, they proposed already. So uh, my hope is that in this next session, we can get that done and, and to give the judicial, our judicial partners the strength to be able to hold these individuals accountable at the high end of the sentencing bar. Because clearly, clearly, they don't think we're serious. Clearly, they don't think there's a consequence to their actions. And to be quite honest, we're showing them that it's not. If we're not going to keep you in jail because you choose to use a gun, then what are we doing? You know, this is, this is ridiculous that we have to stand here every week and, and talk about the devastation these individuals cause. It's not the entire city. You know, we, we have 22 police districts. Three of them are driving like 80% of our, our violence. Three of them, west side and the south side. So that's where we need to concentrate. And, and without having the data just in front of me, I would guarantee you a lot of the individuals on that SSL list live in those areas.
I'm not, I'm not familiar with those particular cases. Yeah, you know why we captured them right away? Because the community helped us with it. Police officers very rarely witness crime especially murder or aggravated battery with a firearm. So we need the community's help. We need their input for us to go out there and get these individuals and hold them accountable. So this case, and, and I mean, it's just, is another tragic example of, of, of the gun violence in Chicago, but the community step, stepped up and did what they're supposed to do. So it's not that the police, are, we, we take every death in Chicago seriously. But we need the community's help in bringing these cases to a, a successful resolution. Thanks, Thank you.